I'm going to show you how to build this blogging web page for an imaginary blogger. We are using WordPress and Bricks Builder, by the way. It is very geometric. There isn't any call to actions, and you'll understand why as I build it. But I want to show you how to use this with Bricks Builder, and we're going to crack it right now. There's many ways you can approach this, but I'm going to be using Flex instead of Grid or other methodologies, just so you get used to using Bricks and start to get more familiar with how you build things in it. We're going to start off really simply with a section and a container. Now, before I go on, I've already loaded in my images. I've already sorted out my color palette. And I've also added in some SVGs as well. Make sure your images are WebP. If anyone wants to understand about the colors, if I just go over to style, let's just go and pick background, click the background color. There is my color palette. Rather than using default, I've created a new one called blog home. And then based on my images and some of the colors that are visible, I've gone and created this palette. The idea is we're going to have a logo at the top. And we're going to have like a bit of a geometric layout that's going to be a mixture of content, images, and basically loop grid blog items feeding through. So let's go to our section. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to my style tab, go to layer, and I'm going to say the max width is 1140. And then I'm going to say the padding on the left and the right is 20. So it doesn't matter if you're on the desktop, tablet, mobile, there are always going to be this 20 buffer space, meaning things are not stretched right across. You don't have to do it this way. If you want things to be stretched all the way with full whip, you can do that. But I like to have a bit of breathing space down the left and the right. Then I'm going to go over to my container. I'm now going to into there, drop in an icon. And you can see the icon's gone right over there. Staying on the container, go to your content tab, and I'm going to align it to be in the center. Then I'm going to go to my icon. And rather than using what is provided over here in the library, I'm going to click SVG. This will not become visible unless in your brick setting, you have enabled SVG to be allowed uploaded by admin or whoever's working on the website. Please bear that in mind. Let's go and select a file. I'm just going to pick this SVG. I'm really not fussed. And that will add in. That is looking pretty damn small. If you were to now go over here and start messing around with the color or the size, it's not going to work for you. Sometimes it does, sometimes not. And if it doesn't, don't worry. Click back on the icon and you will see height and width. I'm going to type in 300. Notice the estate for where it could sit has got wider. When I type in 40, it now fills up that kind of estate. It's like you're setting the parameters for the maximum you know, width and height it could be. Now, in terms of color, I'm going to hit fill. And I'm going to go and pick this color over here from our color palette. Before we continue, let's check how it looks on in the mobile. It looks OK. As a rule of thumb, though, if you had gone to your section and you had set your minimum width to be 1140, even on the mobile, it would have been 1140. And it would have been like your logo would have been somewhere over there. So bear in mind that if you go and put 1140 in width or min width, you might want to resort to using max width as well. So I'm basically saying, you can't get bigger than that. Don't care how big your screen is. Don't get bigger than that because I want to control the look of it. But on the mobile, it kind of readjusts itself and goes, well, that's the max. On the mobile, let's adjust it down. So that's all good and well. Let's now give this section a bit of breathing space. I'm going to give this a minimum height of 60. You don't have to type in pixel. If you want to use REM, EM, you can do. I'm just going to be a little bit manipulative with how big I want it to be, and I'm going to go with 60. To get the logo to sit in the center, staying on the section, I'm now going to align it to be basically in the middle like that. So there we go. We have our logo. Now, underneath that, I'm going to drop in another new section and container. Now, at the moment, I'm kind of working on the fly where I'm going to keep going in like this to my section, go to my style, and I'm going to keep putting in 1140-2020. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this section a global style, and I can just keep repeating it for all the sections I do, and it can make your life feel a whole lot easier. So I'm going to click on the section, go over here to where we have the bar, and I'm going to type into here section underscore 1140, and then I'm going to hit the save icon. And when you do that, it will go yellow. That now means that whatever I do will apply to that global class. So if that was not yellow, so if I do this and I do anything to my section, it won't affect the global class. And I'll explain that in a bit more later on. I'm just going to click back onto this so that it is yellow. And when I go to my style, I'm going to go to my max width and I'm going to say 1140 and I'm now going to say 20 and 20 like that. So now if I go back over to my section over here, Okay, 
and I was to get rid of these values. Let's get rid of the 20 over there. Let's just get rid of all of that. Let me get rid of the 1140. But I go here and I now pick section 1140. It reapplies everything that I just popped in. And you know, if I go back to the mobile, everything is still okay. And we can you can see here on the left and right, we still have that 20 uh, buffer on the left and right, basically. Now let's work on our second section. We're gonna have three containers in here that will be side by side. What I'm gonna do very quickly though, is I'm just gonna duplicate this just to show you how if we keep adding in containers, they're gonna stack above one another. And that's because the section is currently defaulted to be like a column vertical direction. We're gonna go into our section and set the direction to instead be a row. That is equal thirds at the moment, but I wanna have a big one. So if you imagine that was split into a grid of four, First container takes up a space of two, and then the third and fourth take up individual grids on their own. So I want to kind of have a two and a one and a one in total makes four, but you don't need to worry about that. What we're going to do is go over to my container and I'm going to go and set the max width for this. Okay, so I'm going to go in and I'm now going to start to decide on how big it needs to be. Here's where you could do some calculations. There are many other ways you could go about this, but this is how I like to build. I'm a very mathematical person. So we start off with a section of 1140, and I've already taken away 20 and 20 on the left and right for the padding. That then takes us down to 1100. So we've gone from 1140 to 1100. Divide that by two, and you get 550. But I want to also ensure that I'm gonna have like 20 pixel gaps in between my items. Now again, I could go to my section, and I could go to my content, and I could start to mess around with my column gap over here. I prefer to build a certain way where I'm in full on control over layout. So I'm just going to go to my container and I've already calculated that the width I need is actually going to be 540. And this will make sense in a moment. I'm going to go over to my style and I'm going to set my maximum width to be 540. I'm then going to go to my second container and the width of this is going to be 260. And I'm also going to do, well, I'm just going to copy the style and paste it over here. So what we get is a 540, a 260, and a 260. If I just go to my section like that, can you see what we have at the moment? We have got a bit of a layout. We've got 20 pixel here, but then we have a gap. Can you see that gap there? There's a gap there, right? Uh, and then we have, we have a bit of space here, a bit of space there, and then we have 20, but then we've got this extra gap. So I've got 540 plus 260 plus 260. That makes 1060. My estate is 1,100. I've got 40 to play with. Well, where do I put that? It's really simple. Because I've gone and put 20 here and 20 here, I actually want to have 20 here and 20 there as well. So if I take 40 divided by 2, that's 20 and 20, right? All I've got to do is go over to my section, go to my column gap and set that to be 20. I now have 20, 20, 20 and 20. Right, let's just do a little bit more. Let's go over to our container. We're going to fly through this now, okay? I'm going to set my minimum height to be 540 as well. If you go and do max right like that, it, it doesn't change until you start adding in content. And then it will stop at 540, but usually it carries on a little bit. So you're going to get 540 there. So we have, in effect, a perfect square. Let's go over to this container, which is currently 260. We're not going to put 260 as the minimum height because I want it now to fill up that whole estate. Well, minimum height is going to be 540, and I could just copy the style and paste it like that. So we have the start of our new layouts. Let's now go start adding in some content, because this is where it's going to get really interesting. So into the first container, we're going to drop in heading and rich text. There isn't actually going to be a button here, because I'm going to have lots of blog items, and the blog items are kind of your call to action, so I don't need to say, hey, contact me, see my services. I don't need to do any of that. Let's just go and sort this layout out now. Now into my container, okay, I'm gonna go and add in a background image. So I'm gonna click onto background, go to select image, and now I'm gonna pick one of these images that I have over here. I'm actually gonna go with this one here. So we're gonna insert that image. I'm gonna ensure it's set to a full. You would obviously resize these accordingly. So if you know it was only ever gonna be so big, you wouldn't go and add in a 1920 by 1280 or 1080 unless you were gonna have it as a full width on the blog page or somewhere else on your website. The size is already set to cover. I am gonna say no repeat and I am gonna move this to be center, center like that. So I have the person of interest. 
If I felt that was not perfectly right, you could go in and do a custom, and then you would obviously start to mess around with the axes of it. I've used center right just so that we can see more of her there. Now, in terms of the text, I want the text to be lower down. So I'm going to click on my container, go to my content, and I'm going to say align the main axes to be at the bottom. Let's now modify the text. And yes, it is right up against the edges there. We are going to move it inwards, but I'm going to do it in a slightly different way. I'm not going to add in like 20 padding all the way around or inside of that container so it pushes the text. I'm actually going to apply it to the text. But we're going to get onto that in a moment. What we're going to do is go over to our heading, go over to our style. Well, no, style, what we're we doing here. Let's go and change the content, right? Step into my world of wonder. I know, I know, I know. I mean, obviously here you would pick H1, H2, H3, whatever you want. Make sure you've got your keyword weaved into there. We're going to go over to style. Now I'm going to go and create a new style here. I'm going to click on my heading. I'm going to click over here and I'm going to give it a name, blog main header. Then I will hit the save icon so it's now in yellow. Minimize the layout, go down to typography. I'm going to set the color of this to be a white. Now it's really easy to go and stick in a pixel, right? And go, right, that's how big it's going to be, 20 pixel. It's a better idea to go and use REM. And now for the purposes of bricks, um, one REM is equal to 10 pixel because of the root HTML in your brick setting is set to be 62.5. And where your standard root HTML is 16 pixel, in this case, it is 10. So two REM is equal to 20 pixel. 1.6 REM would be 16 pixel. Now, rather than just sticking in REM like that, I would rather put in a clamp calculation. But the first thing I'm going to do is kind of work out, well, how big do I want it to be? So I'm going to say that on the um, desktop, I want it to be 3 REM. But what happens when you get to the mobile? So if I now go over to the mobile view and I have 3 REM, it's kind of wrapping and I think that's way too big. So if I was to go with 2 REM, that looks okay, but it also looks a little bit small. So 2.5 REM is a little bit better. So that's the size I'm going to go with. Then what I would recommend you do is use the link in the video description and go over to our clamp calculation generation tool. When you're on the page, just scroll down. And what you want to do is change your root HTML to be 10, not 16. The 16 is what you might use in other page builders or theme builders out there. Then what I'm going to say is that when we hit my minimum threshold of 380, I do not want the size of this, and I'm going to just change these to be REM. I do not want it to go below 2.5. And when you are at the size of 1,100, so anything above that, it will not exceed this particular REM. What that means is that when you go from 1,100 to 380, you will now scale from 3 REM to 2.5. And what you have over here is a formula. I'm going to copy that formula, go back over to our page. I'm going to get rid of the REM values. Make sure you don't have anything added in at all. And where it says font size, I'm going to paste that formula. Now, the key thing, though, is that you do need to get rid of the semicolon and the curly bracket at the end. And if you go to the start of the formula, get rid of everything before the word clamp. You might argue and go, well, why did you include it here? Well, this is in case you wanted to copy and paste this into like a custom CSS or some other styling framework that you're using. Um, if you're not using any of that, you can just do what I've done here. So what we have is three REM. When you go down to the mobile, that is now 2.5 REM. And as you shrink and scale up your size, it will basically scale to do that. So that's what we're doing with the heading. And that is now applied to the blog main heading. If I use that class anywhere else again, it will apply that color and that clamp. Now I am going to apply some color to this. Let's go over to our style for this particular one. Let's just scroll down until we get to background color. Let's go and give this a color of uh, black. We'll go for black. Yep, yeah, that's fine. And I'm going to shrink this down to be something like 0.5 is what we'll go for. So I've gone 20 on the left and right and five at the top. I've not done any at the bottom because I don't mind it being that close to my text. Let's now go and modify the text. Okay, so let's go over to our rich text. Let's go to our content. Let's change this out. Let's go over to the style tab and very much like what we've done before, we're going to go in and give this a name. Hit the save icon, staying on the style tab, go down to typography. I'm also going to make this be a white color. So this color is, remember though, this is all white. 
If you wanted to, you could click on the yellow and get rid of the color and apply it independently. Or I could have multiple versions of blog subtext or whatever you want. And I know a lot of people aren't going to like my prefixes or suffixes, but you know what? Deal with it, okay? It's how I like to roll and I don't like to feel like we've got to do things a certain way. Do what works for you, all right? We've got a 1.8 and I've got a 2 and the formula has changed. We're just going to copy that. Go back over to our font size, paste it in. Get rid of the semicolon and the curly bracket at the end and everything before the word clamp. Get rid of that as well. And then we're now just going to follow through the same process that we had before. It's actually something I forgot to do. So I'm going to correct myself here. So while we're on the rich text and we're still in yellow, the font family should be your custom font, which is what it is because it already defaults there. But I'm going to pick it in again anyway. Always custom load fonts. It's far better than using Google Fetch fonts. And I'm going to set the weight of this to be a 500. So this is a 500 and a railway. I'm just going to go back to my heading for a moment, which is still on yellow, which is perfectly OK. And I'm going to ensure that this is railway and it's currently set as a 700. I'm going to, no, uh, I think 700. No, we're going to drop it down to a 600 like that. So it's not too massively overly in your face. I'm going to go back to my background color and I'm now going to just change it to be more like a 0.7 because I feel like the 0.5 was a little bit not very clear there. Right back to the rich text. We're still on the yellow. Let's go and do our background color. I'm going to pick black there. And again, I'm going to change the transparency of that to be 0.7. So it's consistent. Then I'm going to get rid of the yellow. OK, so get rid of that so that now we're touching the rich text. But this time we're only now going to touch that particular item. And I'm now going to follow through the same thing I did before, where we're going to have 20 over there. We'll have 20 on the right as well. Not that it makes a huge amount of difference there. I'm going to have 10 from the bottom. And if we now just view that in preview mode over here, where you can see the yellow eye, you can see the look we've got going. Now, I don't actually like that. I want to have a bit of a gap over here. So what we're going to do. So onto my container, I'm going to go to my padding and I'm going to say 60 and just look at what happens over here when I do that. Can you see we've moved away from the right side? I mean, if I'd been a bit more bolder and gone with that, you can now see what it's doing. So that overlay, that background is only now partial over the image. Now, 160 is way too much, but what we get with that is we can see the words. If this was a brighter image, I mean, I am now thinking like this image probably is not the best one. So I'm going to make a quick change. Our second container is going to contain two blog posts. And I'm going to be very prescriptive over the look and how this basically works. Inside of our container, we're going to drop in a block and I'm going to assign it to be a query loop. And basically, the way you build it is with your heading and your images and any metadata. And when you get it to look a certain way, it will repeat that for every other post unless you go and set an alternate template. But we're going to keep it simple. So into my container, which is a 540 height, I'm going to go and drop in a blog. And the first thing I'm going to do to this blog is actually assign it a class name. So I'm going to type here blog underscore loop. You don't have to do that. And you could have a different naming convention. And I know some of you are shouting out that, hey, go for what works for you. Right. And don't feel any hatred from anyone who doesn't like it. So we've got our blog and I've gone and give, given it a class name. I'm then going to go over to my block and I'm going to say the minimum height of this is 260. 260 times 2 is actually 520, but our container is 540. So 540 minus 520 is 20. Because we got 2, the 20 pixel will be the gap in the middle. Does that make sense? So oh, I'm always thinking ahead about my calculations. And not everyone likes to do that, but I, that's how I like to work. Now, before we add any contents into this block, which will be formed the basis of our loop, I'm going to go over to content and I'm going to say use query loop because now we can start to make the fields we add into here be dynamic. So when we add in a heading, we're going to link the heading to the post title and I've got nine posts. So it brings through the post title and I'm also going to bring over the date as well. But I just want to show you the practicalities of using a heading you've already built with an existing class system and how you can remove it and apply a different one. So I'm going to copy this heading and I'm going to paste it into the blocks so where we have it. And what's happening at the moment is you're getting a bit of a repeat infinity effect. Don't worry about that because it's trying to now bring through more than it should. Click on your block, 
because we have the query loop activated and this setting became visible called query. It wasn't there before until you do query loop. I'm going to click on that and I'm now going to say that we will only have one post at the moment. Now I'm going to go over to my heading and I'm going to remove the style that we currently have. You do that and we're back to square one as to what we were before. Again, remember, you know, you may want to change this to be a H2 or a H3. And I know the size is changing, but I'm overwriting any theme styles or anything and I'm setting it all on the fly here. What we're going to do with this heading is give this a class name as well, blog underscore loop underscore title, and we save that. Then I'm going to go over to my style. And a little bit like what we've already done before, I'm going to go to my typography. I'm going to set this to be white. I'm going to go to my background. I'm going to set this to be a black and I'm going to set the transparency to be a 0.7 as well. In terms of the actual size of what we have over here, I am going to set this to be a 500 as well, a bit like what we had before. But in terms of the font size, I'm just going to reuse the formula we had here. So I'm just going to click on my rich text, make sure the class system is picked for the blog subtext, otherwise it might not show the formula. I'm going to copy that over, which was a 1.8 to a 2 REM. Go back to my new heading, which is blog loop title, and I'm just going to paste that in. And it's now kind of imitating what we had before. The difference is it hasn't done the padding, which again, I will work through independently. In fact, we won't do it independently because this is for the loop. I'll leave it on. So I'm going to go to my layout and I'm going to say, give me 20 uh, on the left. Give me 20 on the right, which it has already kind of got over and five on the top as well. I won't worry about the bottom just yet because I will add in some further metadata. So what I'm going to bring through is the date this post was actually created. Well, no, let me go back a step. At the moment, this is showing the heading. We need to make it be dynamic. So clicking on the heading, go to content. I'm going to get rid of the text. I'm going to click the lightning icon, dynamic data, and I'm now going to pick post title. That is not going to show you the actual post title until you're looking it in either preview on our live system. Let's go and add in another field below this. Go down until you get to metadata. And when you bring over metadata, it's going to bring forward quite a few fields. Look, you get the author name, the post date, the post comments. You could do it like that. You could also, if you want, I'm just going to get rid of that. Go and copy over this uh, text that we already have in the first container, paste it over. Go to the rich text, get rid of all the text you have here. Click the dynamic data and again, go to post and go and pick post date. The only thing you have to bear in mind though, is that that rich text will still be using the blog subtext. So if you're okay with that, you can go with it. You will have noticed though that these are not aligning very well at the moment. So I'm just gonna go to my blog just to, in case you've spotted that, why are they not aligning? You know, they've all got 2020, why is it not aligning? What you gotta do is go over to your blog and uh, where you have align cross item uh, axes, go and hit stretch like that and it kind of stretches it all the way over. Now, I am gonna add in some padding onto my blog block so that it again imitates what we've got over here. But if you ever notice that where it's a staggered effect, just go and stretch it and it will align it for you. So back over to our rich text, that is now copying over the style you have here. And if you're okay with that, go with it. If you're not okay with it though, again, you may want to um, leave it enabled and then what you could do is go over to your style, go over to your typography, and here you could modify the size. Because this is not yellow, that stays intact. But I could, if I want, manipulate it and now drop in a completely different size. And here's where I'm going to break the norm. I'm not going to enter in a clamp calculation. I'm going to say, by a rule of thumb, I always want this to be 1.5 REM. I don't care if you're on the tablet, the mobile, whatever. I do not want that to get bigger or smaller than 1.5 REM. And some people will go, hey, what are you doing? It's okay. It's like I'm doing 20 pixel on the left and right for the padding. So what? It's, it's fine to do. Right, so what we now have is a bit of style over here. I am going to go to my layout though, and I am going to change this to have five at the bottom like that. I'm then going to go over to my block. And now I'm going to manipulate it a little bit more. 
So I'm going to go over to my layout. Remember, we are on the blog loop class. So this applies it to every blog loop if we ever use that class. I'm going to go here and say, give me again about 40 from the right. Not 60, because 60 was a bit too much. We're just going to go with 40. I'm going to go to my content and I'm now going to align this to be at the bottom like that. By the way, look, if you didn't center, it would have gone center. You could have aligned it in the center like that, which is no longer using the stretch, which does not look so good. Let's go and add in our background image as well. So we're going to click on the block. We're going to go down to the style. We're going to go down to where we have the background and we're not going to add in a color. We're going to click the lightning bolt for the dynamic data. And then we're going to scroll down until we get to featured image and an image will appear. I'm going to set this to be a center center. I'm going to say no repeat. It's already defaulted to cover. You can go and click it if you want. But that's going to be our first image that feeds through. And that's basically kind of it, really. The only thing I need to do, though, is make sure if you click that, it actually takes you somewhere. So if I'm heading down here and you might say uh, link to, let me just click. Uh, in fact, let me get rid. Uh, no, blog loop title. We do want to leave that enabled. I'm going to go down and I'm going to click dynamic data. Click the lightning bolt and I'm going to say go to the post link like that. That's all you got to do. Just post link. So if I now go back to my block, click back on the query over here. Currently, this is in date ascending order rather. I mean, you would do it in descending, but based on the images I picked, I'm just going to go with date ascending. I'm going to say show me two posts and what will happen is those two posts will now appear. I'm then going to go to my container that contains the block items and I'm going to say space between. And you, can you see now we have a 20 pixel gap appear there. So when you start to think about your sizing, you can really control how things look. So I'm now just going to save this. If we now view this on, say, a live screen, can you see the layout? Now, I agree. Don't get me wrong here, OK? It is covering the face here and you could totally argue that maybe, you know, the sizing we got here isn't the greatest, but this is just based on the images that I've currently brought over at the moment. But what you have is a standard container with a background image and text. And then over here, you've got your blog post and you've got your date. What if you don't like the format of that? What if I want to just have the words October 2023 or, you know, I don't like the layout of that? You could modify that. So if I go back over here to preview again, go to my rich text, which is the blog subtext over here, I could go in and if I was to now put a colon and I go and put in a Y, what will happen is you will only get the year and you can see it there, 2023. If you were to go and put in an M, you would get that. So if I was to go and do MY, I get OCT 2023. So if you don't want to have the exact, the exact date, you can manipulate it a little bit like that. That is really quick and easy, our layout for our, our kind of hero banner image almost on the left and our blog. Now, when we go over to the mobile, the hero banner image or the hero image kind of works okay for the height of it. When we get down to the second container, that's not looking so good. And there is a really simple reason for that. It's because the maximum width is currently set to be uh, 260. So I'm going to overwrite that and set that to be 100% like that. So, so far, so good. Now, in our second container, this is actually going to be an imitation of what we have over here. But all I'm actually going to do is pop in a background image. There's not going to be any text in there or anything like that. It's just a background image, to be honest. So we're just going to go over and I'm going to go to my background and I'm going to pick a image. And I've applied center center and that's now looking OK. I'm not completely satisfied with the blog. So I'm going to go back into my block that currently contains this. I'm going to ensure that the class is enabled. I'm going to go over to style and I'm going to give it a bit of a background overlay. So I'm going to go over to down here to where we have gradient overlay for the style. I'm going to say apply this to, as an overlay. I'm going to pick my color. Which will be this orange color. And I'm going to drop the transparency of this to be 0.25. And the only reason I've done that is because you're going to get variation in colors coming over, right? So I want to try and consistentize things a little bit by adding in a bit of overlay because you're going to have bits of red and green come through and that doesn't fit the color scheme very well. But this blends it in a little bit better. If we check again in the mobile, we go down to container number two, very similar to what I've kind of done before. I'm just going to give it 20 there. I'm going to set the max width of this to be 100% like that. 
Now, obviously, it doesn't need to be that tall, so I might want to drop it down to be, say, a 260, or I might want to go with a 300. So adapt it to kind of work for you for what kind of style you're going for. At the same time, you may decide you don't want to show that on the mobile. And to get rid of it, just scroll down until you get to miscellaneous. And where it says visibility, I'm going to say hidden. So when you get to the desktop, you've got the image. It's even there on the tablet. But when you get to this particular mobile size, that image is now removed. So it's entirely up to you if you want to include it or not. I am, for the purpose of the tutorial, going to leave it in. Now that we've done that, we're now just going to replicate that because we've we spent a bit of time on that, but we're going to just duplicate it now and just reuse the items. And this is where it gets really simple, easy. I'm just going to duplicate this section. So here's the new one. I would always say um, rename your section. So I'm going to say hero section. I'm going to go over to my layout. I'm going to say give me 20 from the top. So we're maintaining that look. So that 20 pixel gap. This container, we are not going to use now for this particular area. So I'm going to completely get rid of it. But I still have the block and I still have my container over here. The container that contains the block, though, I'm going to change that to now be a 540. Because it's now 260 plus 260 plus the 20 in the middle. So I want a 540. And this container that we have over here, I'm going to duplicate that. And I'm going to rearrange it by putting it over there. So I now have container, blog, container. But we're going to do something really clever with the blog, right? Or the block or the loop grid, right? This block contains inside of here a query. And it's repeating the same blogs we had from above. Well, that's ludicrous. First thing we're going to do is set this to be a 4. And then I'm going to say offset by 2. So what that will do is it will skip the first two. And the reason it skips the first two is because we've already done them here. So I'm now manipulating the layout and, how I and what I want to show and how I want to show it. The problem you can obviously see here is that the layout just looks really, really wrong, right? So let's get it to replicate what we've got above. The first thing we're going to do is go to the container that contains all the block items. We're going to go and set this to be a horizontal row. Now it's squashing everything into one row. And again, it just does not look right. But don't worry, we're going to sort that out. I'm then going to say we're going to flex a wrap. Now, as soon as we do that, everything just starts to wrap. And we're almost back to where we were before. So you're going to go, well, you set it as a row. You put it as a wrap. What was the point of that? The reason why it's wrapping is because at the moment, it's assuming a full width. So if I go over to this block, and we go down to the style, nowhere have we set the minimum width for this. We didn't do it over here because I was like, oh, I don't worry. It sits in one container. The container is a 260. Don't worry about it. But over here, we do need to be a bit prescriptive. So I should have done it on the blog loop. So let me now show you how when you change it in one place, it changes it everywhere. Let's go over to our original block that contained our original loop grid okay we have blog loop enabled the class system is there let's now go and set the maximum width of this to be 260 did you notice what happened there that is 260 and look lo and behold it's also done it over here as well now if you see anything like this whereby they still haven't like put them into like a grid layout with a two by two which is what i was trying to achieve you might start messing around with like well it's on wrap is set as a row, uh, the, the blocks inside, you know, the, the blog loop, we've already decided that they're going to be 260. That should fit within 540. Why is it not like that? Sometimes what you need to do is just drag your screen a little bit. And even then, it's not perfect. But again, that's because of the estate I'm using. And I've got a lot of screen taken up by over here. And if I get rid of the structure, can you see it's a proper 260 by 260 by 260? So I've gone and swapped out those images there. I'm going to go and add in the overlay color. We've got the color there. I'm going to ensure I've picked that one. And I'm going to set this to be, let me get this right, 0.25, something like that. So I'm going to pick up this rich text. I'm going to copy it. And this image that we have over here, or this container, I'm going to paste it in. I'm going to hit this container, go to the layout, set it to be at the bottom like that. Now I'm going to modify all of the text. Now I'm going to show you again a bit of a trick. If you, if you go and pick anyone that's got your blog subtext class enabled, 
when I go to line height and I do say 1.2, notice all of them change like really, really quickly for you. So it's a really cool way of doing that. If I go to my blog loop title, I'm going to do the same there. I'm just going to go for a 1.1 just to bring it all down a bit. I'm going to get rid of the yellow because I don't want to apply it to all of my section classes. And I'm just going to say, give me some padding of about 80 from the top and 80 from the bottom, just so we get a bit of breathing space there. Into here, I'm going to drop in a heading, make sure it sits inside of the container so it goes there. I'm going to go to my container. It is already centered aligned. If not, it probably would have been over there. Just go in here, align cross axis to move it into the center. I'm going to go to my typography, center align it. I'm going to go for my dark text color, which isn't completely black, by the way. It's like a 2222222. I'm going to go over to my original heading over here. Make sure the class system is enabled. Go and pick up my clamp. And this is where you just regurgitate something you already might have used before. Go over to my heading and I'm now just going to paste it in there. I'm intentionally not setting a class system up here because I'm just showing you that you can use it and you don't have to use it. All right. There is no steadfast rule here. OK, I always feel like sometimes people get a little bit stuck up on like you got to do this. You got to do that. No, you don't work with what works for you. That's how I like to roll. Now, this heading is stretching across all the way. So what I'm going to do is go over to my container and where we currently have the width which we know the section is 1140. I can either do it on the section or I can do it on the container. For simplicity, I'm just going to do it on the container. I could, if I want, go with like 50%, but instead I'm just going to be a little bit controlling and I'm going to go with 750 pixels like that. Now, before we move on, let's just check how everything looks on the mobile. So we've got our original hero banner, Da -da 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 blog. We've got this image coming through. We've got our other blogs feeding through. And then we have this and we have a bit of a gap. If you don't like that, basically click on your section and overwrite those values if you want or leave them in. Or again, if you feel like you want to add in a bit more width on your container, so shrink it down again, do what you want. But I don't mind having that little bit of gap there. And I'm now going to have two big containers. So what I'm going to do, we're going to take our hero section and we're going to duplicate it and I'm going to move it to be at the bottom like that. So I'm going to keep the big container. I'm going to keep the blog, but I'm going to get rid of this container at the end. I am then going to swap my items over. So I'm just going to make sure I've got them in the right order and I'm going to pick it up and move it like that. So now that is gone over that way. I'm then going to go over to my block, which is my query. I'm going to go in over here and I'm just going to set this to be one for now. And I'm, there is no offset going on there, so I don't need to worry too much. The key bit, though, is what I'm going to be doing with the sizes of this. So even though this is using the blog loop facility, I'm actually now going to completely get rid of it. I've got rid of it. The only reason I've duplicated is because it already had the heading and it had the rich text, which had the post date. And I'm going to reuse it, but I'm going to regurgitate it a little bit. And this will make sense in a moment. The first thing I'm going to do, though, to this container is make it be a 540. So 540 and 540 over there. Is that making sense so far? I am then going to go over to where I have uh, this text, which I'm going to leave in. And for simplicity, I'm just going to change the background image. We're going to go with this one here. I'm not even going to change the text, to be honest. I'm just going to keep this really simple. Our main focus is what we do in this block or this container. Remember, this is set to be 540 by 540. The block inside of here, though, does not have any size applied at the moment because I've removed the class. Here's what we're going to do. We are going to make this block be a row. Can you see what it's done there? It's now got the title and the date next door to one another. Now for both my date and my heading, I've removed the class system and I've just given them a color of 22222 and 1.6 REM. You'll notice over here, we've got the date and the color. I am going to remove uh, from the block the background image because we actually don't want it. So I'm just going to get rid of that. And you'll notice there things are not aligned. So we're going to go over to our block and I am now going to center it. It doesn't look perfectly in line, I have to be honest, but we will work on that. I've modified my rich text and heading very quickly. My rich text only has 20 padding on the right. In fact, it has zero on the left, zero on the right like that, okay? It only has 20. 
Now my heading has zero all the way around. There's no padding. My rich text does have 20 because I'm just pushing it away from the title a little bit. This block at the moment has nothing going on in there and I need to modify that a little bit. I'm going to go in and say, give me 20 on the left. Give me 60 on the right because I don't want my words to be all the way up against the end. And I'm going to say, give me 10 at the top and 10 at the bottom. Now you could, again, just go and do this in your container with a column gap and a row gap. I'm just showing you that there are ways you can mix and match how you want to work. So this is going to show me now the date and the title. Okay, that is what is going to be sitting inside of that block. And if I now go over to my content and I go to my query, which is already enabled, and I now say, show me the first, let's go with um, eight. It's now giving me like a, a list of all of the posts. By the way, the dates are all set to October because I created them all yesterday. Bad mistake. I should have changed the date. Why are they spaced out so much? Again, this is where you might go to your block and you start going top, middle, bottom, what's going on here? You got to think about, you know, where things sit, the hierarchy. So if I go to the container where this block sits, because we reused something that sat above where we were doing space between, I'm going to align this to be at the top. You can now see what it's doing. I'm not completely satisfied with that. I want to go in and drop in. I want to drop in. I want to do another heading. So I'm going to click on my container. And I'm now going to go and click heading like that. And I'm going to pull the container to be outside of the block. And rather than apply like padding on the container, because I've already gone and done it inside the block, bad mistake, right? I'm just going to do a 20 like that. And I am going to go and add in 10 from the bottom as well. I'm going to change this to say, and just go with something like 2.4 REM, because I don't mind that being that size when we get to the mobile. The only other thing I'm going to do now to this is I'm going to go to the container that contains it, go to the background, go and give it a color. And now that the color's in, you can clearly see we do need to have some padding in over there. And I think we should add some bottom. Otherwise, you know, you might have a bit of an issue later on. And when you get to the mobile, it's looking okay. You could definitely argue like, is that gap now too big? I would probably say yes. Let's go to the mid quote and let's drop that down to be uh, 60 like that. Again, you could drop in a clamp calculation here. So you could use the calculator to go, well, 80 on the desktop and on the mobile, I want it to be 60 or 40. And as your devices grow and shrink, you know, obviously it would scale up accordingly. So here you have these will link. You can see the finger over there. You click that, it's going to take you over to the relevant post. I'm going to take a copy of the more blog section. I'm not going to rename it. I'm just going to move it down over here. So below here, we now have another load of images and things going on. I'm going to get rid of this container that we have over here at the end with the text. I'm going to go to where we have this container. I'm going to now make it be 820 in width so that we now get a grid of three. And then notice how everything is still consistently geometric over there. We're going to go over to this block and I'm now going to change this to be, uh, well, we're going to have three posts and we are offsetting. Let me get this right. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that means we offset six like that. And what we should get is now uh, three completely different posts coming through there. The heights are way, way off. So I'm going to set the first container to be 260. The second container is also going to be 260. I've just changed a few images, but if I now preview and just show this how this basically looks. So here we have our layout and I think it's quite cool for a blog layout. It's nice and geometric. It looks okay on the mobile as well. You could add in more colors, call to actions if you wanted to. You could add in another quote, say maybe over here or below here. And then you would have had another section container with like maybe a contact form and another image as well. But this is like a very simple layout very geometric, but once you go through the hard work of setting up the first one and thinking about your values, everything just pieces together in such a wonderful way. Hey, I'm Imran Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, share, and follow. I'll see you soon. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way to win it life, I never miss that